Last week on the show, we talked about how Kate is the most active royal, and this week she's been out and about in camo. Can you run us through this story? Yes, yeah, so uh, Princess Catherine paid a visit to uh, the Welsh Cavalry, um, formerly known as the Queen's uh, Dragoon Guards, um, who, which is basically known as kind of the, the foremost reconnaissance wing of the army. So it's not surprising that she actually wore camo because that is their specialty in the armed forces. Um, but she's taken over a role that was previously um, a role of, of the Queen Mother um, up until she passed in 2002. And you can really see her engaging um, with the, the, um, the soldiers in, in her, during her trip. She actually received a, a brooch from one of the soldiers which belonged to the Queen Mother uh, up until she passed in 2002. And this is one of the traditions um, uh, that we see a king's wife uh, tends to take on this role uh, in the Queen's Dragoon Guard. Now, this week, Prince William was in Singapore for the Earthshot Awards ceremony. Here's what he had to say. The last year has been one of great change and even greater challenge. A year in which the effects of the climate crisis have become too visible to be ignored and a year that has left so many feeling defeated, their hope dwindling. However, as we have seen tonight, hope does remain. The light of optimism is burning bright in our Earthshot finalists. Esther, there was quite the myriad of A-listers and dignitaries, wasn't there? There were, yes. Uh, <laughs> Prince William has the privilege of being surrounded um, by A-list celebrities, particularly when he has these initiatives that he wants to champion. I will say it was quite a contrast, um, him being at this Earth Short Prize in Singapore uh, with Prince Harry, because he actually flew commercial and he banned all of his staff from flying private, um, which is, uh, you know, Quite, quite a difference from, from his brother, Prince Harry. Um, but it's amazing that he's been able to champion this cause. Obviously, environmental issues is close to his heart as well as his father. And he has uh, actually uh, engaged a lot with local entrepreneurs and, and um, innovators in Singapore. And that's what this prize is really for, you know, to try and push innovation in, 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 uh, in the sustainability industry and see how we can find solutions for the future. Also this week, King Charles gave his first speech to Parliament. Uh, the Princess Royal again accompanied him as their gold stick in waiting. But what were your takeaways, the main takeaways from the speech? So the main takeaways from the speech is obviously very political. He's basically outlining uh, the government's plan for the next uh, Parliament. And he effectively just wrote what he was, he said what he was told um, to say. Um, he had a speech in front of him and he was laying out the Conservatives' agenda. So on the political front, obviously, it was very much uh, kind of the Conservatives' last hope to, to try and uh, win re-election. Um, I, do, I do remember one part of the speech where you, you could see it, it was... It stuck in his throat a little bit when he was talking about the renewal of new oil and ga uh, gas licences in the North Sea. Obviously, we know that the king is very uh, environmentally friendly, and so that's not something that would have personally gone down well. But it is the agenda for the government, and he had to be professional and show a sense of duty and not really react to how most people suspect he really felt about it. Um, but overall, it was a good speech. Uh, it was very calmly delivered, and he, he, just, he did his job just like he's supposed to. Yeah, absolutely. Now, lastly, a quirky royal rule means that Lady Louise can't be a princess. What's that all about? So Lady Louise can't be a princess. It all has to do with the, her, her sort of line in, or her position in the birth order. So when her father became um, Earl, of, when he married and he became an Earl, uh, he wasn't actually given the title HRH. And so he decided with the Queen to not actually grant those titles to his children because it would have been inappropriate because they're so far down in the line of succession. Um, but they do have that option if they choose to in the future take up the HRH title. Um, it does seem unlikely, though, because it would seem a bit improper uh, just given tradition and the fact that they haven't been gifted it since birth, and so why would they want to take it later on in life? And also their privacy was something that was very important um, to their parents. Esther Kraku, as always, thank you so much for joining us. We'll chat to you in a couple of weeks.